Hello everybody and welcome to some very, very exciting CPD on uploading a YouTube video. Hopefully I'm going to try and make this as straightforward uh, as I can. Uh, it is fairly straightforward. Hopefully I won't overcomplicate it. So we're going to go through the stages I use in terms of uploading uh, my videos. And you might well have seen some of these uh, videos if you've been an avid follower of Alan History Nerd, which I'm sure you all have. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Right. So this is my step by step guide. Um, I don't use any fancy video capturing software other than just the record function on PowerPoint. So this is a fairly basic method of doing it all. Um, you could record your videos in different ways, in which case everything I say from after the little PowerPoint I'm going to bit I'm going to do will still apply. So hopefully you're really, really excited um, to get going. Right. So my starting point is uh, I start by creating a PowerPoint. Um, I believe that there's other people doing CPD who are going to be going through that recording method and what you do with it. If you want any more information on it or you want me to sh want to talk to me, want me to share my experiences with you, I'm more than happy to do so. Just drop me a line. Uh, the particular one I'm using this is one I've uploaded um, this morning, uh, which is part of a series that I do called Done in 60 Seconds, which works quite nicely, where it's just a single slide PowerPoint with a countdown thing going across the top. And I try and explain something in 60 seconds which for those of you who know me is a bit of a struggle. Right. One thing I have learned about this as I've gone through is don't write anything, put any pictures or anything in the bottom right hand corner, because that is if you record yourself, that is where you are going to appear. So leave that little gap free. So you've recorded your video on PowerPoint. You've not covered um, covered up any of your, your writing or your details in there, and it's all ready to go. Right. I then save two copies. I save a uh, PowerPoint version, which has got the recording on it and it's there and I can go back to it and edit it and change it and things like that. But I can't upload that onto YouTube directly. So what I then do is I go to Save As and I select Windows Media File, uh, which is kind of asterisk WMV, which you can see on uh, the slide uh, on, this, on this slide next to me. Uh, and I save it as that. Right, particularly if your video is quite long, go make a cup of tea, um, go for a walk, ha have some lunch. It can take a while. That might just be my laptop at home not being particularly powerful. But if I do something like a 60 second video, it's quite quick. If I do something that's uh, 15, 20 minutes, it can take it a good while, particularly if the computer has been asked to do anything else at the same time. Right, you then go to your YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to do a separate video where I talk about creating a YouTube channel and making it look pretty and things like that. Um, so if you go on that, then there'll be this it's like a little camera uh, icon with a plus in the middle of it, which you can see on, on the screen. And you click on that and it will ask you whether you want to upload a file or go live. Um, I've always uploaded a file. I'm not quite sure what happens if you go live. I'm sure it's really exciting. If any of you are going to give it a go. Um, please let me know and I'll come and watch you do it and add comments and all kinds of exciting things like that. So, right, we've clicked on that icon and then we get this screen. Uh, and it says, right, you want to upload something. Tell me what it is. So you click on select files and then it will bring up your um, your folders and you can browse through your folders and you can pick the video you want to upload. Uh, you double click on it and it uploads. It would seem that you were done, but you're not. Now, th this is the, the bit where, which, depending on what you're trying to do, you can spend ages on or can be relatively quick. Um, uh, you need a title that will be pre-populated by whatever you've called your file. So you might want to edit this a bit because there's certain things, uh, icons and things you can't use in a, uh, a file name that you can use on YouTube, like um, hash, uh, question marks and all kind of different things like that. So you might want to alter it slightly. Um, if not, you just leave it. Then you want to write a description. And what you want to do with the description might vary on depending on what you're trying to do, whether you're just trying to tell your students what they're doing uh, or whether you're trying to reach a wider audience. The stuff that you put in your description will impact on where your video turns up on searches. Uh, and so that can be quite helpful. So I put in things like A-level politics and Edexcel on here because um, this is part of a a key part of the, the politics course. And so what I might do is I, I might then get other students who are searching what is conservatism and my video turns up and they watch it. And then I get a warm, fuzzy feeling inside because people are watching my videos. 
Right, another important bit, if you really want to sell your videos, is the thumbnail. Now, you, you can create a thumbnail using other software. Uh, and again, when I do the bit about creating a channel, I'll talk about some of some of the websites and things on that, or particular website I use on that, which you can create a um, a nice looking thumbnail, or you can just pick a one of the ones from a moment out of your own video. Uh, and uh, that's what I've done on this one. If you go on my channel, uh, you will see a variety in terms of the different videos. Some of them have just got a thumbnail just taken off a video. Some I've created something. And again, if you really want your, your videos to fly out there and, and lots of people to watch it, you want a really eye catching thumbnail. I'm not sure I'm very good at creating those, but I do give it a go. The other option that you've, you've got then got underneath that on this screen is you, you can add it to a playlist. Now, I find playlists work really, really well, and I'll show more of that on the video on in terms of creating the channel. So this particular video is actually going to go on three playlists. I've got a done in 60 seconds uh, playlist. I've got a political ideas uh, playlist, which is a particular part of A-level politics course. And then I've got a big A-level politics playlist. So it's going to go on all of those so people will be able to find it in different places. So if I've not got a playlist ready, I can add a new playlist. So, for example, when I do this one, I'll create a new playlist of instructional videos and it will go in there. Right. You have to click something on this on audience. Um, it says whether you made it for kids or not. I always click no, because when I've read the blurb on it, it suggests kids are kind of under 14. And given the age of our students, I'm not really aiming at under 14s. I'm aiming at A level students. Um, if you click yes, there are some stricter rules and things that you have to apply to. I'm sure that none of those would be a, uh, any kind of barrier or, or problem. So you um, you click on the one of those that you want. Right. You can then keep on going down and you can click on more options. You don't have to, but you can. And in one of the things that comes up here is tags. Now, I always put things in in tags because this will help people find your video. Um, if you're not bothered about people finding your video, I wouldn't bother with tags. Um, it's unlikely that you need to do anything in terms of your video, in, including uh, a promotion or paid in, endorsement in it, unless you already are YouTube stars, in which case you probably don't need this video in the first place. So again, I've added tags in like Edexcel and, and A-level politics and conservatism and component one and one nation and things, various things that might help people find it. Once you've done all that and you've, you've done all the basics on details, so stage one, essentially, then you click on next. You have to have done the audience bit. You have to have a title. The rest of it is essentially up to you how much you put into it. You have to have a thumbnail. It will choose one automatically for you if you don't choose it. Just be careful in terms of uh, I've, I've had somewhere I've been pulling some very interesting faces and where it's paused me uh, in the middle of the video. Right. So you then once you've got all that bit on stage one done that you want to, you click on next. And then you get this bit. Now, this bit I find quite exciting and I get quite carried away with. You may or may not. It's the video elements bit. Uh, and this helps you make your videos all linked together. So maybe on your, your first upload, this is something that you might um, not need to do anything on, really, because there won't be a huge amount for you to link to. Uh, it, if you really want to create a big ch a channel and um, lots of videos are the interlink, um, then then this can be really helpful. Um, so how much you do on this is up to you. You don't have to do anything. You could just click on next. But I'm going to explore what happens if you click on the different bits. Right. If I click on end screens, then I will get a variety of different ones that I can choose. The particular one that and there's lots of different templates you'll look, you'll see and you can scroll down them. The one I've chosen is um, this one that has got a video, a subscribe button and a playlist on it. So the video is the bit um, on the left of the, the screen. The subscribe bit is the circle bit in the middle and the bit with the red round it is the playlist one. Now, the standard thing is they come on for the last 20 seconds of the video. Now, this video is, is very short. It's only a minute. So I what I then did is I shortened these and you can just pick them up and move them. Um, the arrows come up there. Sometimes you get if you get the four way arrow, it means you've got the um, the bit, the time a bit. So you want to move that across. And then if you get just the two way arrow, you can slide the subscribe or the video or the play bit, the playlist bit of, along. Now. These bits can be really helpful if you've got other videos, if you've done something like created a, um, a this week's work video 
and it's using uh, instruction it's using then content videos that you've done so for example if i've done a um this week's politics work video and then i'm wanting them to look at a load of videos on socialism then i'll put a link into one of the socialist videos in the video bit and i'll put a link into the playlist of political ideas in the uh, playlist bit uh, and that will help my students but it'll also help anybody else coming to my channel so if i if i click on this bit and I've, i'm adding to my playlist and i and so i double click on the playlist bit that box which was had the red around it i then double click on whichever playlist i want to go into it and then that's then on the uh, on the video similarly if i want to add um link to a particular video so that on the bit was on the left hand of the screen i double click on that on this one you get options automatically youtube will get do the best for the viewer um you can set it to just on a, a little menu set it to most recent download or you can manually choose a video so if there's something specific you want those people to go to having watched this then you go and find that one so for example on my conservative one i want them to go and watch a video about conservatism in more detail rather than just a 60 second one right the other option that you've got on this from here is cards if you if you add, click on add card then your video will appear and it'll start playing um, and then essentially you can click add card at any point in time and you'll get options um, there are a variety of them. I, I, I did go through a period of, of using a lot of the polls, but there's a thing on YouTube now saying they're not going to support that any longer. So the two things that I generally do is I either add a link to another video or a link to another playlist. Um, and this, again, can be really helpful. So if I in a, a weekly um, setting work video, I'm saying, and you need to read this, you, you need to watch this video to be able to do this bit on socialism. If then the I've added a card, then at that moment in the video, a little I will appear or a message if I write a, if I write in a particular message, and that will then come up and they'll click on it and they can then go straight to that video. Um, so again, can be really useful, but it, it's more of a thing once you've got multiple videos on your channel. It doesn't necessarily actually have to be on your channel. It could be you could be sent, sending them somewhere else. So you might go, this is a really good other video to watch that explains this really well. And then you can have that and you can link to anywhere on YouTube. So, again, if you're wanting to link your video to other videos that you haven't made elsewhere on YouTube, as long as you've got the URL, then you can copy and paste that in. Um, and you can see here on, on this screen, I've got the um, the videos that I'm clicking, uh, videos or playlists I'm clicking on. And then I can add a kind of teaser text or something on there that will appear briefly in the top right hand corner um, to get it. And as I've said, really useful if you've done a week's task video and then you've got content videos as well right so as you can see i've on my one i've then done both of those you can do one you can do neither it's up to you and then you click on next right <clears throat> now this is the bit where you decide is your video just for the few is it just for you or are you aiming like i am for youtube stardom um and i'm hoping that millions and millions of people will subscribe to my channel uh, and watch whatever I'm doing. Now, the, what, what we've got here is the option, so private, then only you can see it. Unlisted, that, that means that only, for example, if you send your students the link, will they know it, or you can go public. So, you pay your money and take your choice on that one. Being a big show off and wanting everybody to see my videos, I, of course, go on public because I want to be YouTube famous, and I want to reach a wider audience because I like the idea that my videos are not only helping my students but others and then it will say video published and then it will start saying well do you want to promote it uh, and it also gives you a nice link to it so one of the first things i always do is copy uh, that link and then one of the bits i do is i've got a, a history and uh, department um, twitter feed and i will try and promote my videos through twitter so at that point i would just click on the twitter icon and it it's got a, it produces a ready-made tweet for me and so that's then ready to to go you can also do you could do it on so if you've got a, a any of the other forms of, of social media you could do that i don't know I've, I've added a little bit to that tweet it's got my video ready to play so i then tweet that out so anybody following uh, history at trc and if you aren't following it already then please do then you will see if you go through our our, our stream you'll see loads and loads of videos that come up and this is a good way of getting people um, to click on and, and find them. Again, it, it's a good way if you get your students to follow you on, uh, follow your departmental Twitter or course Twitter, then it, the videos go up and they, they can see them and get to them straight away. 
if the um the the students aren't avidly following you on twitter and I, i'm not sure why they're not doing that but it's sometimes i find that is the case uh, then it's worth just dropping them an email and reminding them so it's something i do so i just copy uh, that uh, that link i paste it into my email i tell them what it's about i nag them to watch it like it subscribe again please do all of those things and then i i leave them alone for probably about another 24 hours before they get another video if they might well be complaining to you all about that but uh, it makes me feel like i'm doing something and then <laughs> I know I, I get very excited by statistics and this is where, you, where it all gets wonderful, the whole YouTube stuff, because then I can go back to my videos and I can see how they are doing. So this morning I created this um, conservative conservatism one. Uh, and if I go then and I click on the analytics bit on that previous slide, then this this screen comes up and there's loads of exciting things. to come. It's not hugely populated yet because it's not been on for very long. But uh, the, the grey kind of um strip going across is how my videos normally do and then we can see this particular video is the little wiggly uh, blue line and so i can feel warm and fuzzy inside because this video started off doing really well which is excellent particularly as we're not actually onto conservatism yet so some people out there have decided immediately and some of my students have gone we're not studying this but i'm going to watch it anyway we're not studying it yet but i'll watch it anyway so then i get excited and we move Right. I hope you've uh, found that helpful. Um, please remember to uh, to like, to subscribe, to comment and come back to me if you need any further help. Uh, there will be another video going through uh, the whole the ins and outs of creating a channel. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Um, enjoy your CPD day. Hope you uh, crack on with making lots of exciting videos for your students. Send me some links. Show me some more, more channels. I'll be really interested to see it all. Thank you very much.